my old nemesis, Vandalay Silva, has retired. Now, you guys feel something on that? It's hard, man. It's hard when those guys that represented an era, not just within their own sport, but within your time in the sport, your time as a fan is also broken into eras. It hurts. You feel it a little bit right now. Vandalay wasn't the same sting because he stopped fighting a period of time ago. He had his last match in Bellator MMA against his old nemesis, Rampage Jackson. I happened to be there. Happened to see it. And Vandalay was putting out a feel going into that match that this was going to be the last one and coming out of it, but he didn't say the words. And Vandalay is very interested in other forms of fighting. Like when this boxing thing caught on, I could easily see Vandalay standing across from Mike Tyson. Vandalay taking any one of those matches. Vandalay versus Vitor. I could see this and I would bet that I'm right. That if he had the right opportunity, that's something that he would like to do. But Vandalay was also a trainer. He was a trainer to his own son. And I was this close to meeting Vandalay's son. I wish I would have. Because there's, there's three young men who I follow very close. I know all about Vandalay's son. I know all about Anderson Silva's two boys. And I was this close to meeting him, but the, the, the child, Vandalay's son, was a, was a young man. He was not older than 14, probably right there. I had a problem with his dad. I wasn't sure he was going to understand. Vandalay was standing right there, and I was just about to get down on the knee and say hello to the boy, but I don't know if Vandalay would have wanted me talking to his son. I mean, it was, it was a weird time between Vandalay and I. But I just remember that moment because I almost did and wish that I would have. Just wish that I would, because see, now I follow, these, I follow these kids. And I had similar experience with Vandalay's. Uh, I apologize, Anderson's boys. Anderson and I get done with part two, which at that time was the biggest middleweight fight of all time. Might still hold. Can't say that for sure. Uh, we're going to the press conference. And when you leave the press conference, I mean, it is truly done. There are no more cameras. There are no more questions. Th this is now complete. You are going to return to your room and whatever it is that you have to do, but you are now in your own life. You're, you're off the clock. That is behind you. So we're outside waiting for the press conference. And Anderson and I don't speak. He's standing right there. We don't speak. But he has his boys, and his boys looked at me. When I looked over to them, they looked away. And I could tell there was a part of them that was frightened. There was a part of them at that age that had followed some of the media, seen some of the stuff was going on, weren't in the sport themselves, weren't on posters and competing. They were training, but they weren't competing. So I, I just share it like the idea of their father and I being opponents was all that they knew. The other side of it where their father and I were partners, damn good partners, is the part that they missed. When Vandalay announced his retirement, okay, there's a number of very good things. And the reason I brought up his child, very relevant, because Vandalay's coaching him. Vandalay's training him. Vandalay's chauffeuring him. Getting him to practice, spending his time. You got to find something to do with your time. Retirement sounds like a cool word, doesn't it, guys? When you are confronted with a situation of what do I do with my time, that didn't used to be a choice. I was on the clock. I had responsibilities. I had places to be, or I don't have my job anymore. What I do with my time is not a choice. This is what I do with X amount of time. Then I find what I'm going to do for some kind of relaxation prior to having to go to sleep because I'm a human being. I mean, I just represented a day. And you want that retirement so bad until it comes, you go, what am I going to do with my time? And the only thing that athletes have to look forward to is drug abuse and alcoholism. It's true to try to fill and replace some of those highs that they got from the sport, some of their purpose of which they now question. And I probably didn't get any sympathy from anybody for saying that, but it's still a reality nonetheless. And Vandalay never had that downtime. He knew right away, going with his son, and now he's even running for Congress. And that's not a new idea. I did the Ultimate Fighter with Vandalay in 2013. If I'm wrong, it was 2014, and he was talking about it then. 
He was talking then about getting involved, and he had all sorts of reasons. He was worked up. He cared about Brazil very much, and he was watching the system, and he was very bothered. So this is a new idea, and I would love to support him in some way, right? Part of running a campaign is you got you got to have co contributions. And I tried to find a place where I could contribute, but I could. I'm asking you guys a question if you happen to know where it is. And the only site that I could find, even in search of the internet, but it was written in Portuguese. It was some kind of a campaign site, but it was written in Portuguese. And I don't know the rule. If somebody from a different country, could, you know, my point is, not only for myself personally, but if there's some way that we could support vandalize, let's consider doing this. And there are fighters that try to go into politics. We just saw BJ Penn do it. Chris Lytle did it. I mean, just by example, but it's a great sign that that person and athlete, in this case, Vandalay Silva, has found an energy and has found a purpose and goal and a way that he's going to spend his time. It's a, it's a great example. And I think that Vandalay sent many. I mean, there's many people who looked up to Vandalay. There's many people who admired, particularly the Pride Days. His moment in there was Sakuraba, where he took the honor back to Brazil. Big deal. I'm only sharing with you as his, as his story continues and the retirement is upon us, he's also doing the retirement the right way. He found a void. I've only been given one piece of advice from my father-in-law, who is extremely involved in his grandkids' life. Extremely, but he's only told me one time. Hey, what all he said to me. Once they start, whatever it is they're doing, whatever their thing is, once they start, you keep them going. Do not let them stop for any reason because their goals have changed, because their goals were achieved, because of an injury. You do not let them stop. This is what they do. This is where they go. And they're there every day, no matter what. And I believe in that too, very much so. I, mean, I just believe in that. I'll, I'll coach kids. And there's a meaningful difference from a kid who gets hurt and therefore stops coming to practice versus the kid who gets hurt and can't practice, but he's there. And I think as we do look at Vandalay, right? I mean, this was, this was one special career, and perhaps we aren't mourning it the same as others because we saw that it was coming. B because we knew whether he's fighting again, we're pretty sure that he's not. He said the words now. Vandalay set a damn good example. In many ways, and he said it for generations, not just his own. And I think as you're looking at the Vandalay story and you're looking at things that you want to admire and compliment and someday emulate, the way that he has chosen to take what he learned in this sport about hard work, about goal setting, about time management, about people skills, the way that he took that and transferred it to something else. In this case, it was politics. It can be anything. But so many people don't do that. I'm retired. I have time. My feet are going to go up and I'm going to watch some television. It's not a good plan. Once you get them in something, no matter what, keep them going.